Hello YouTube, welcome back. This is part two of forging the Sutton Hoo axe hammer. So in this episode, the second in the series, we're going to make a start on the head itself. So unusually for an Anglo-Saxon axe head, uh, the eye is punched I believe. Uh, and I also believe that it has a high carbon steel insert and a high carbon steel pole welded on the hammer face. So the head itself I'm going to be making out of this big block of wrought iron. Uh, which has quite a nice grain banding, uh, as you can see along here. So I could weld a handle onto this uh, to make it a bit easier, but I do have a pair of big old tongs which I will use instead. So to start off with, I will get some heat in there and I will forge it down to approximately 50 by 30 under the power hammer. It goes an awful lot quicker under the power hammer than doing it by hand. I would still be at it if I didn't have this mechanical marble. So here is the end result. So like I said, it is approximately 50 centimetres wide by 30 centimetres thick, millimetres rather. Uh, and I have marked up the centre uh, and centre dotted it and that is where I'll punch the hole. And I've also marked up where the cheeks for the eye will be, uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. So to start off with, I will hot punch it. Uh, and because this is raw iron, it's quite nice to punch. Uh, I say quite nice to punch. It's quite easy to punch. Uh, depending on the grade of iron, uh, it can be a bit of a bugger as well. Um, mainly because it, if it's quite coarse iron, it will tend to split. Uh, however, I have no such issues with this particular batch of iron. So I am cooling off my punch every three or four hammer blows, as you can see. That's purely to stop it from overheating. Uh, and then once I've punched halfway through on the one side, I will flip the billet over and punch through the other side. Uh, and then punching halfway through means that I'll have a nice clean shear line. So I'll then go over to the hardy hole and just knock out the slug from the centre of the bar. And here is the punched hole, which I think is, purely by accident, one of the neatest punch holes I've ever done. So with that hole punched, uh, I will take a drift. Uh, now this drift matches reasonably well to the handle which we made last week. It is a little undersized from the handle. Uh, that is quite deliberate uh, because I'll put a slightly bigger drift through afterwards when the axe head itself is pretty much finished uh, and that just means that any deformations or anything that occur during the forging process can be rectified just prior to the head being finished. So here is the drifted slot which is nice and central as you can see. So the next part is to create the cheeks around the eye as you can see here. Now if we look at this photograph which I pinched off the internet uh, you can see that the eye actually goes all the way around the punched hole uh, which isn't actually shown in the drawing. Um, so I am purely going to draw out the ends ahead of each side of the eye. Uh, and it should give me the effect that I want. So again, under the power hammer, and this is the hammer end which I'm working on. And this wants to be about 30 millimeters square. Uh, when I say square, I mean square. Here you can see that I'm having to dress the squareness of the part by holding it slightly on the diamond to forge it back straight. Uh, and then once I've forged it out to roughly the section I want, I will go back to those centre dots and I will just get a nice, crisp, clean transition between the two, uh, as per the drawing and the photographs. So this can be a little bit tricky, uh, it's made a lot easier by doing it under the power hammer. So again, like I said last week, this would probably have been done by one blacksmith and a couple of strikers when the original one was made, uh, and the power hammer just replaces the need for a striker. So then I will just straighten everything up using the set hammer uh, in this configuration as you can see here, just leaning on the bick. 
so that there's nothing underneath the eye itself and that'll just allow me to bend it back straight. Then once that is done I will move on to the other side. Now this other side wants to be a slightly different dimension, it wants to be 35 by 25 millimeters. So again make sure that your corners are square. I'm on the diamond here again and this is the final result of creating those eyes and you can see uh, what I mean by those cheeks coming all the way around the eye. Uh, rather than just being cheeks as you would see on a regular axe. So at this stage I will cut down the billet. Uh, I have marked on the outside the furthest dimensions that it will be when it's finished and the inside marks are where I'm going to cut it uh, purely because I'm going to be drawing out this material. So on the right on the left hand side uh, it's pretty much two dimension but I'm going to be facing it so I have cut it 10 mil shorter and then on the axe side it is uh, 30 mil 40 mil shorter than it needs to be. So at this stage here is the high carbon steel face for the hammer end of things uh, and it's not quite square uh, so I will square that up under the power hammer. In fact I deliberately didn't cut it square because I needed to thicken it up a little bit. So just under the hammer, square it, thickness it, and generally get it ready to weld. However, eventually it turned out square, and it is just a touch bigger than it needs to be. And that is because I'm going to cut some teeth into it. Uh, and also I will get a layer of decarburization on the outside during the welding process which I will want to grind off later. Uh, but at the moment I'm just cutting these teeth in. Uh, for those of you who've seen my Anglo-Saxon anvil and my Anglo-Saxon hammer videos you will know that this is to grip it onto the body of the axe. Uh, so these teeth are quite sharp as you can see here. So then all I need to do at this stage is drop a bit of flux on there uh, and tap the body of the axe hammer down onto it and as if by magic it grips. So at that stage get a welding heat and start welding the face onto the hammer axe thing. So you can see I'm using the drift to hold it, uh, that is to stop the eye itself from collapsing and because it's a lot easier than messing around with tongs. Uh, so I tacked it with the first heat and then I'm welding it properly with the second heat and then blending it in also. And then here is the end result with the face actually welded onto the axe hammer. So just what I will do at this stage is I will just kiss it with the power hammer uh, and that is to blend in those weld lines a little bit. Uh, I didn't put a massive amount of effort into blending the weld lines in, uh, not like I normally do, uh, and that's because I want it to be actually visible that it does have a high carbon steel face welded onto the wrought iron body. Uh, so I'm basically just squaring it and getting everything a nice even dimension, which gives us this. So the next thing I will do is, having quenched off the eye so that I don't get any distortion in there, I will take my sharp chisel and I will start cutting a v-groove into the axe section of it. So like you can see here, so it's quite chunky, uh, but I've started doing it this way because I actually find it easier to do to cut the v-groove in at this stage than I do after I've tapened the axe head. So here it is with the v-groove. And then, like I say, what I will do next is I will just go under the power hammer and I will start tapering everything. Uh, and as long as you're careful, you should get an even taper on each side of that groove. 
uh, and it just makes the whole process easier and quicker than tapering it first and then trying to split it when it's so thin that it's bending away from you all the time. Now in hindsight I wish I'd spread it out a little bit more before tapering it out but it's not the end of the world because I was still able to leave it a little bit thick and then go in with the cross peen and spread that out a little bit and I'm looking for a final edge dimension of 60 millimeters wide. So I'm going to have to spend a little bit more time cross peening than I would have liked uh, but there we go. And then once it's been peened out to 60mm I will go in with the flat face of the hammer and just take out those cross peen marks. So at this stage I will start putting a little bit of a curve in there uh, because if you look back at the drawing of the original you will see that the blade itself curves backwards ever so slightly. Uh, so I will mimic that same effect. So once all that dressing and shaping is done, uh, I will take my chisel again and I will just go back in and reopen that V groove. And because I've drawn it out quite a lot, you will see that it is lovely and deep. And the final thing I will do to this is I will just scarf the edges to help it weld a little better. Now I've actually done this longer than the high carbon steel insert is going to be uh, and the reason I like to do that is that it actually protects the steel by enveloping it in wrought iron. So here is the piece of spring steel which I'll be using for the high carbon steel edge. And to start with, I am just going to curve it. Uh, and the reason I do this is that when I stick a double bevel on this, it will actually straighten out. If I put the bevels on without curving it first, uh, it will simply bend the other way. So at this stage, let's start bevelling. I'm doing this uh, pretty much on the edge of the anvil and that's because the toe of the hammer will come out further than the bevel itself and I don't want to be banging the anvil because it damages both the hammer and the anvil. Um, and as you can see, it is straightening out quite nicely. So what I will then do is I will actually curve it in the opposite direction uh, and I do that by holding it vertically on the face of the anvil and just hammering down on it and then giving it a touch of a straighten afterwards. Uh, and that is to make sure that it matches the curve that I want on the axe. So this isn't critical because you can actually grind this into place but uh, I don't think it would have been ground originally so I'll actually do that at this stage. Uh, you can also put that curve in after you've welded everything together, uh, it doesn't really matter. So at this stage I will head back to the vise and I will just cut some little teeth in the bit. So coming in at a 45 degree angle, just pushing those teeth out. And I'll do it from two different directions so that I have teeth coming out both sides. Uh, and I'll just help it grip into the jaws of the axe. So flux it before welding. Again this is carbon steel so I always flux carbon steel. You don't have to but uh, I do like it for this because it saves on decarburization. So then I will drop the axe down and just tap it. Tap it into place and then close it up and like I said you can see that the wrought iron jaws are coming lower in some places than the high carbon steel bit. That will actually protect the high carbon steel from oxidisation during the welding process. So give it a bit of a flux before starting. And into the fire. And you can see again that I am using the drift here uh, because it's a bit easier than the tongs which I'm trying to use. So just take a decent welding heat on that. And 
weld it all together. So I use my usual technique of one heat to tack, one heat to weld, and then one heat to blend. There may be another heat here and there just to weld up some areas that haven't quite welded together. And make sure you close up the outside edges as well, like so. Just blend everything together. And here we have the bit welded into the body of the axe hammer. So at this stage I will start shaping. Uh, so I'm going to set that curve in a little bit more. I'm going to dress the thickness where it's varied a little bit because of the welding process. Uh, and just generally do a bit of shaping. I didn't actually have time to do all the shaping that I want to do. Uh, so I will have to do a little bit more next week, uh, purely because it took all day to get to this stage. Uh, just that bulge out, get a nice even thickness. And as if by miracle, the dimensions are pretty much perfect to the drawing which I'm quite pleased about. I think it's more than I think it's more by fluke than by me being a clever sausage. And here we have the axe hammer so far. So like I say, I need to do a little bit more forging to it to get the profile going. I didn't have time to finish it as much as I wanted uh, when I filmed this video yesterday. Uh, but here we go. So thanks a lot for watching. Next week we will finish it and hopefully start fitting the handle. Uh, I'm probably also going to remake that ring on the end because I detest it. So there we go, thanks for watching, uh, here is my list of Patreon donors who have very patiently been supporting me uh, for a little while now. Thanks a lot guys, uh, and I will see you all on the next one next week.